Here's what one church is doing to change their community. The House in Bremerton, Washington in Anderson Cove. In this poor community, there are many problems. Single parents, disabled, undereducated, those on welfare and disability. There's a lot of alcohol abuse, drug abuse, and even domestic violence. This is what the house is doing to bring a change. I chose to purchase a duplex uh, in this Bloom on Bloomington Street because there was a need for us to live here and be with the people, their day-to-day -day worries, their problems, whatever they need, that uh, we'd be here to hear them and be able to assist. Well, I think it started with, with my pastor and James walking, um, walking through the neighborhood and um, um, looking for opportunities to serve people. And um, they ran into this little neighborhood in Anderson Cove and it uh, was pretty run down. The park was all um, fenced off and it looked really depressed area. So they thought that'd be a good place. They prayed about it. And um, when I first heard about it, I think it was a couple of weeks later, and after church, we all, the whole church went down there and we kind of walked through the community and talked about it and talked to people, prayed with them. And then um, started after that, we started making an active um, effort in that community, you know, brainstorming how we could get in there and, and help them out. Um, I came to Bloomington. Uh, it was, our church had decided that this was our community to reach out to. We were coming on Sundays and prayer walking and seeing that we really needed to live here to be able to have an impact on this community. Oh man, we've uh, made friends with uh, quite a few people. Yeah, John down the street yeah, is stuck in a wheelchair. So uh, we ended up building him a ramp so he could actually get out of his house with his wheelchair and and uh, make it down the street and and uh, have a little bit more mobility. And uh, his uh, daughter comes to church every Sunday now, hangs out with us. He has yet to come down, but we might see him sooner or later. <laughs> well, first thing we did was we started doing uh, barbecues. I mean, that was the you know simplest, easiest thing to do. Um, Basically what happened was after we started um, showing interest in the community and, and going to the city and asking about the park because we really wanted to make the park usable again, the city um, got embarrassed or whatever and they ended up coming down and taking the fence down and cleaning it up. And as soon as they did that, we went, went in there on Sundays and started doing barbecues and inviting everyone in the community together and it, it was, um, and that was the beginning. Um, later on, we did some carnivals at the end of school year, or at the end of summer, and uh, the kids would do, play carnival games, and we and they would win school supplies. Uh, check, check. Later on, we did uh, Fourth test. of July events, soapbox derbies. Um, we've uh, had um, um, worked on people's cars, and then those people would work on their neighbors' cars, and and uh, you know. All type of gee whiz, we've done all types of stuff, mm -hmm. sewing clubs, knitting clubs. The people that live here are lower income, uh, mostly single uh, families, uh, single parent and family, pardon me, uh, moms with a uh, few children, uh, broken families, alcoholism, uh, drugs, and this area had the uh, most 911 calls. You know, it costs a lot, I guess. I mean, we. We travel there, we purposely, you know, we don't live in that community, we live 30 minutes away, so, and we go there two to four times a week, so that's, that's a lot of gas and time expense. Um, you know, when we do these events like uh, carnivals and fairs and uh, um, camps, things like that, we pay that out of our pocket. And, you know, the average person I think in our church maybe makes 30,000 a year, you know, if you average it out. Um, so it's, it's, you know, it's a financial burden. Um, we have people who purchase homes in that community and that costs them a lot of money. We have folks that rent and they could live anywhere and they choose to live in that community and pay rent there instead of other places. Um, people talk about safety, but we found that that hasn't been a, a real concern for us. Uh, so we're not worried about that. 
um, in time because people come in and need help. And um, it could be any time of the day or night. And um, it might be when you're not feeling like you want to go do something or, um, you know, and so you have to sacrifice a lot of your time. Um, as a church, uh, I mean, just different members of the church moving in and uh, um, I think just being willing to live in the same atmosphere as everyone else and being able to show um, how, um, how a Christian lives well, there's a gentleman <clears throat> that was right next to the duplex where we have church down there. His name's Grant. And uh, um, first his car broke down and one of the young men of our church helped him throw in a starter because he wasn't able to get in the car and do that himself. Uh, later on, um, his car was broken and he needed help getting his daughter back. She was with his mom, her mom. And she couldn't, um, she, she couldn't, bring her daughter to him and he was getting worried because she was out partying and stuff like that so he came over frantic and asked for help so um, I met him for the first time we got in the car and we took off and we got his daughter later on um, when he was in need of a place to stay he came and saw us and uh, and we took him in and so we've been working with him and his daughter and help him get on his feet and get a job as a church, a lot of the people have moved into the community, and then um, I think just uh, being able to show people what Christ looks like um, all day, every day, um, has made a big difference in itself. We have roughly about uh, eight adults with their families living here in this community from our church. In my wildest dreams, my hope would be that we would get some couples, maybe younger couples, that would um, come to know Christ, um, maybe buy a few of those duplexes, and, 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 and start to, you know, um, organically, people in the community start caring for each other and, 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 and learning this philosophy of love and loving your neighbors yourself. That would be a beautiful thing and hopefully that it would spread to other streets. Um, you know, but if we could get a few people that would fall in love with Christ and, and then take, invest in the community by buying some homes and, and um, not just being a renter, but being maybe and living there with the people and then maybe renting out the other side of the duplex and, and just being mentors and helpers and friends to their neighbors. We moved into this community to to uh, attempt to be a good influence on people and um, and to uh, just uh, try and live Christian lives and help and serve and you know as a Christian we're supposed to you know we're supposed to love our neighbor we're supposed to have be people of compassion and mercy and. Um, and, and people need, need things to do. The people need work. Um, sitting at home watching TV or, you know, men's Bible study is great. Going to church is great. But we need, a, we need work. We need people to serve. The, the major eye-opener for me is, is when we lost our daughter, Jana, and we were just surrounded by our family and um, just tons of support and people that cared for us and and I couldn't imagine going through something like that without those people around me. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, just realizing how blessed both of us are with both parents in the home and, and a good family structure. And uh, just realizing that a lot of people don't have that and they desperately want it and need it. Yeah. So that was, that, was a, that was the eye opener for me. I am compelled to uh, live in Bloomington, reach out to the people in Bloomington because of a heart of gratitude of what Christ has done for me. We are mandated, we are commanded to love, and this is my way of loving. Because it's a command of God to love your neighbors yourself. And, you know, when, I, when you realize what Christ has done for you, how he, he died on the cross for you, you weren't worthy of it. Um, and now he says, go be me to that community. And, and 
when you have a regenerated heart and you feel the Holy Spirit, the first reaction is you want to tell other people. Yeah.